Welcome to Truly Scary Walmart Stories. Smash like and subscribe to tread the thin line between reality and the surreal. Let's begin our eerie expedition. The fluorescent lights hummed overhead with a persistent drone, casting long shadows across the otherwise deserted aisles of Walmart. It was nearing midnight, and the store had taken on an eerie quiet, a stark contrast to the daytime chaos. My name's Alex, and this was just another night shift, or so I thought, my headphones blocking out the world as I restocked shelves with meticulous care. The mundane task was a welcome distraction from my racing thoughts about pending assignments and looming student loans. I reveled in the monotony, finding comfort in the familiar. That comfort shattered with a sound, a whisper it seemed, drifting between the aisles. I paused, pulling one earbud out, convinced I'd imagined it. The store was, after all, supposed to be empty except for a handful of us night workers. I waited, my breath held in anticipation, but there was nothing, just the continuous buzz of the overhead lights. Chuckling at my own unease, I resumed my task, attributing the noise to my overtired mind playing tricks on me. As the night progressed, the whisper returned, this time accompanied by the soft echo of footsteps. My heart skipped a beat. I was sure of it now. I wasn't alone. Peering down the aisle, I expected to glimpse Mike, maybe coming to poke fun at my easily spooked nature. But there was nobody there. I considered calling out, yet something held me back, a gut feeling urging caution. Instead, I opted to investigate quietly, tiptoeing toward where I thought the sound had originated. There, on a shelf lined with cans of paint, was a message. Nice color, don't you think? Scrawled in the dust, the message was unnerving, not for its content, but for its implications. Someone was here with me, watching, playing. The chuckle I mustered sounded hollow in the vast, silent store, my earlier bravado fading fast. Still, I convinced myself it was a prank. Mike, if this is you, man, not cool, I whispered, hoping my voice would carry. Only silence met my ears, a silence that felt heavier, charged with an unspoken threat. The shift from mundane to menacing had been so gradual, I barely noticed until it was upon me. But there and then, with a cryptic message taunting me from the gloom, the night took on a sinister edge. My earlier dismissal of the whispers and noises felt foolish now, replaced by a burgeoning dread. I should have returned to my task, pretended it was nothing, but I couldn't. Curiosity, fear, and a stubborn streak wouldn't let me. I had to know who or what was sharing the night with me. Little did I realize, I was stepping into a nightmare woven into the very aisles of that Walmart a shadowy preamble to a horror that would test every ounce of my resolve. Determined to shake off the unease that clung to me like a cold mist, I decided to head to the break room for a momentary refuge, hoping a change of scenery would clear my mind. The eeriness of the empty store weighed on me with every step, the silence amplifying the smallest sound, making my heartbeat sound like drum beats in my ears. Reaching for my phone to message Mike, my fingers paused mid-air, as I rounded the corner, coming to an abrupt halt. The main exit, usually propped open during night shifts for easy access, was firmly shut, the security gate pulled down and locked. A chill ran down my spine as I raced to the other exits, finding them similarly secured. Panic whispered in my ear, but I fought it down, attempting to rationalize. Maybe Beth, our supervisor, had initiated new security protocols. But why lock us in without warning? Confusion spiraled into fear as the reality of my entrapment settled in. Isolation pressed in from all sides, my sanctuary transforming into a prison. I retraced my steps, my previous determination now mutated into desperation. Could this be another prank? If so, it was cruelly executed. Then amidst my tumultuous thoughts, a sound broke through. Something different than before. A clang, metallic and deliberate, rang from the back of the store. It cut through the silence with precision. A beacon or a warning, I couldn't tell. Which, heart pounding, I edged toward the noise, each step laden with trepidation. Behind a stack of heavy-duty shelves in the storeroom, I found the source. A crowbar lay on the concrete floor, its presence inexplicable, ominous. Nearby a utility door, another potential exit, remained steadfastly immovable despite my best efforts. Its lock tampered with, the mechanism jammed. It dawned on me then, the store hadn't been secured against threats from outside, but from something or someone within. My mind raced as I pieced the eerie puzzle together. 
the whispers, the message, the locked exits, all elements of a sinister trap laid with meticulous care. The cold realization that I was not merely stuck but hunted within these walls ignited a primal fear I hadn't known I possessed. Grasping the crowbar with a resolve born of fear, I made a silent vow. If push came to shove, I wouldn't go down without a fight. This newly found courage did little to warm the chill that had settled in my bones. I was a player in a twisted game, the rules of which I barely understood, forced to navigate the dim, sprawling aisles of Walmart, not just for my job, but for my very survival. Every shadow seemed to sway, every noise a potential harbinger of my discovery. The line between the hunter and the hunted blurred as I steeled myself for what was to come. The once mundane task of a night shit had morphed into a nightmarish ordeal, one where the only escape was to confront the darkness that lurked within the very walls that confined me. The store felt alive, its every creak and whisper a testament to the unseen terror that stalked its aisles. My grip on the crowbar tightened, a lifeline amidst the growing dread. Time lost meaning as I meandered through a labyrinth of shelves, every turn bringing me closer to an inevitable confrontation. The hunter in the shadows remained just out of sight, their presence felt but never seen, pushing me to the brink of panic. Then, it happened. A figure darted across the end of an aisle, barely perceptible, a ghost haunting the periphery of my vision. My breath caught, heart thundering against my ribs. The game of cat and mouse had reached its zenith the hunter emerging from the shadows. I crouched behind a display, every muscle coiled ready. The silence stretched, charged with anticipation. In a sudden rush of adrenaline, I sprinted towards the figure, crowbar raised, refusing to be the victim any longer. The chase led us into the warehouse section, a maze of boxes and crates beneath flickering lights. Our dance was frenetic, desperate, the crowbar a feeble promise of safety in my trembling hands. And then, cornered near the loading docks with nowhere to run, our roles reversed, the hunter became the hunted. The confrontation was brief, a clash of fear against fear. My assailant, a shadowy figure propelled by motives unknown, was no match for the desperation that fueled my actions. With a well-aimed swing, I incapacitated my pursuer, their identity obscured by the dim light. I didn't wait to see them recover, my legs carrying me away with newfound urgency. Dawn's early light began to seep through the cracks in the loading dock doors as I stumbled outside, greeted by the crisp morning air. It was over. The police arrived shortly after I made the emergency call, their questions a blur as I recounted the night's horrors. My attacker, revealed to be a disgruntled former employee seeking revenge on the store in the most twisted way, was taken into custody, their sinister game brought to an end. In the aftermath, as co-workers arrived for the morning shift, I couldn't help but feel a disconnect from the world I once knew. The Walmart, with its sprawling aisles and towering shelves, had transformed in my eyes. No longer a place of mundane employment, it had become a battlefield where I confronted my deepest fears. I left with the first rays of sunlight casting long shadows behind me, the weight of the night's ordeal etched deep into my soul. The experience had changed me, sharpened my instincts, and revealed a strength I never knew I possessed. But it also left a scar, a lingering unease in quiet, empty spaces, a reminder of the night I fought for my life in the aisles of a Walmart. As I walked away, the store shrinking in the distance, I realized the true horror wasn't just the physical ordeal I survived. It was the knowledge that safety is an illusion, shattered in an instant by the darkness that lurks just out of sight waiting for the moment to strike. I always believed that there's a peculiar kind of solitude to be found in Walmart during the dead hours of the night, an odd peace in the aisles lit by the flickering fluorescent lights. It was a sanctuary from the chaos of day-to-day -day life, a place where time seemed to stand still. That belief crumbled swiftly, leaving me with a memory so viscerally unsettling that even now, as I recount this experience, a shiver courses through my veins. It was well past midnight when I found myself perusing the electronics section, the soft hum of the air conditioning serving as a lonely soundtrack to my aimless browsing. My nights were often restless, filled with an insatiable urge to wander, to explore the empty spaces where silence reigned supreme. On this particular night, Walmart was my chosen destination, 
its vastness offering a playground for my mind to roam free. The realization hit me suddenly, jarringly. The front doors refused to yield under my push, locked tight and immovable. A wave of confusion washed over me, followed by a cold prickle of unease. Had time escaped me so thoroughly? The thought of being locked in for the night was initially amusing, a childlike fantasy of having free reign in a place usually teeming with people. But as the minutes stretched on, that amusement gave way to a profound sense of isolation. The silence grew heavier, the shadows cast by the dim lights more menacing. As I ventured deeper into the store, trying to quell the rising panic with rational thoughts, the first action beat struck. The toy aisle, once a colorful canvas of childhood wonders, transformed into a corridor of mounting dread. From the corner of my eye, I saw a flash of movement, a doll tumbling off its shelf without any provocation. My heart jolted, a tight knot of fear settling in my stomach. Rationality whispered that it was merely a coincidence, but the seed of terror was already planted. The soft, unnerving sounds of mechanical laughter from the activated toy echoed through the empty aisles, a sinister serenade that seemed to mock my growing fear. The second action beat wasn't far behind, amplifying the eerie atmosphere that now cloaked the store. As I hastened my steps, Desperate to find another human soul or a working phone, I stumbled upon a scene that rooted me to the spot. There, in the clothing section, lay a shirt identical to one I had lost months ago, draped over a mannequin like an unwelcome reminder of the world outside. The sight of it struck a visceral chord within me, a chilling realization that this was no mere coincidence. This was a message a silent declaration that I was indeed not alone in this daunting expanse. The flickering lights above seemed to pulse with a sinister rhythm, casting elongated shadows that danced with malicious glee. Suddenly, the vast expanse of Walmart didn't feel like an empty playground, but a meticulously set stage for a nightmare yet to unfold, with me unwittingly cast as the protagonist. The clothing section, with its mazes of hangers and racks, suddenly felt claustrophobic, suffocating. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, orchestrating these revelations with a cruel sort of precision. My hands trembled as I picked up the familiar shirt, my mind racing with questions. How? Why? My search for explanations was cut short by an unsettling silence, a void that seemed to swallow even the soft hum of the ventilation system. It was in this eerie quiet that I found myself stumbling upon yet another deliberate sign of my unseen companion's presence. Action beat three unfolded with a pang of dread. A photograph, face down, lay a few aisles over, seemingly innocuous in any other setting, but here, it was a portent. With hesitant fingers, I turned it over, and the breath hitched in my throat. It was a picture of me, one I had never seen before, taken from a distance, my figure blurry but unmistakable. The world tilted, and the fluorescent lights seemed to flicker in tune with my rising panic. This wasn't just a case of being locked in, it was a meticulously planned nightmare. I was being hunted within these walls, watched by eyes I couldn't see but could feel, piercing through the shadows. In a desperate bid to escape the mounting horror, I pushed through to the warehouse area, hoping to find a staff door, a phone, anything. That's when I ran into Jordan. Action beat four, the night shift worker who'd been a comforting background figure on my many nocturnal wanderings. But now, he looked different, haggard, his usual calm veneer shattered by fear. We need to get out, he whispered, grabbing my arm with an urgency that left no room for argument. It was clear he knew more about our silent stalker, but questions would have to wait, as survival took precedence. Together, we navigated the dark corridors of the store, a beacon of mutual hope in the face of our shared terror. It wasn't long before Action Beat 5 hurled us into a relentless chase, our pursuer, no longer content with watching from the shadows, made themselves known with heavy, deliberate steps that echoed through the grocery section. The stark, white aisles became a gauntlet, each turn a potential trap. We ran, our breaths harsh in our ears, the ghostly wail of the freezers accompanying our frantic escape. Jordan led, his familiarity with the store's layout, our, our only advantage against the malevolent force that seemed to anticipate our every move. The chase felt endless, a nightmarish loop with no exit. But then, as hope began to wane, the back storeroom came into view, 
a sliver of reality in the hellish dreamscape we found ourselves ensnared. Jordan's hand found the emergency release for the delivery door, a gesture so fraught with hope and despair it was almost sacred. He pushed it open, and for the first time since this ordeal began, I saw the night sky, a canvas of inky darkness dotted with stars, indifferent to the horrors unfolding below. We didn't stop to savor the freedom. The pursuit was too close. Our adversary's steps, a constant reminder of the nightmare we were desperate to wake from. The cold air of the early morning stung my lungs as we burst through the delivery exit, the oppressive atmosphere of the store giving way to the expansive freedom of the outside world. Our flight from the premises was frenzied, driven by a primal urge to put as much distance as possible between us and the nightmare we had just endured. Jordan and I didn't speak. Words were unnecessary, our shared experience speaking volumes more than any conversation could. The police arrived within minutes of our frantic call, their skepticism evident as they listened to our disjointed accounts. They searched the store but found no sign of our tormentor, only the eerie remnants of our desperate flight through the aisles. The officers suggested it was a prank gone too far, but the fear in Jordan's eyes told me it was something far more sinister. We parted ways with a nod, an unspoken agreement that no matter how bizarre or unbelievable our experience might seem, it was undeniably real. Days passed, and the terror of that night began to fade, replaced by the comforting monotony of daily life. Yet, a part of me remained on edge, wary of the shadows that lingered just out of sight. It was during one such moment of apprehension, while I was sorting through my belongings, that Action Beat 7 delivered a chilling reminder of the horror I was so eager to forget. Among my items, I found a small, unassuming envelope that I didn't remember acquiring. My hands trembled as I opened it, my heart sinking as I pulled out a photograph. It was a snapshot taken from the store's security cameras, capturing Jordan and me as we fled through the aisles, our expressions twisted in fear. But it was the note scrawled on the back that froze my blood. Next time, you won't escape. The realization hit me like a physical blow. Our pursuer was still out there, watching, waiting for their next opportunity to strike. The nightmare wasn't over. It had merely paused, biding its time until it could resume its twisted game. The police were of little help, dismissing the photograph and note as a sick joke, leaving me feeling more isolated than ever. Sleep became elusive, each night a battle against the shadows that seemed to creep ever closer, whispers of a threat that refused to be silenced. The world I had once navigated with confidence now felt fraught with unseen dangers, every stranger a potential adversary. Yet, despite the constant fear, a fierce determination took root within me. I refused to be a victim, to let this unknown predator dictate the terms of my life. And so, I wait, vigilant and wary, for the day when the nightmare returns. I don't know when it will happen or what form it will take, but I'm prepared to face it. Because next time, I won't run. Next time, I'll be ready. The game continues, but this time, I'm playing to win. The dare was simple. Spend the entire night in Walmart without getting caught. My friends and I had devised the plan with a mix of teenage bravado and outright boredom. The perfect concoction for bad decisions, or so I thought. As they snuck out just before closing, offering final winks and poorly stifled chuckles, I nestled into my hiding spot among racks of winter coats. The thrill of the dare tingled in my veins, a wild anticipation for the night's solitude. That thrill, unbeknownst to me, was the prelude to a nightmare. The first hour passed in eerie silence, broken only by the occasional creaks and groans of the settling store. It was an otherworldly experience, Roaming the abandoned aisles bathed in the dim emergency lighting, I found amusement in rollerblading down the empty checkout lanes, the hoosh of air my only companion. But as the novelty wore off, a distinct feeling of unease began to settle in. The expansive retail space that once thrummed with life now felt like an endless, deserted maze. It was in this immense silence that I first heard them, footsteps. They were faint, almost imperceptible, amidst the ambient noise of the refrigeration units in the distance. I paused, straining my ears, convinced my mind was playing tricks on me. There it was again, a soft scuff, like sneakers dragging lazily across the tiled floor. My heart skipped. Maybe a night janitor? I reassured myself, 
although I knew Walmart didn't employ overnight cleaners. Curiosity edged over caution as I tiptoed towards the sound, guided by the flickering fluorescent lights that cast long, dancing shadows against the aisles. Each step felt like a plunge deeper into an unknown abyss. The playful thrill that had fueled this escapade was gone, replaced by a growing apprehension that I was not alone in this nocturnal playground. As I rounded the corner into the electronics section, my makeshift rollerblade expedition came to a shuddering halt. There, amongst rows of dormant TVs and silent gadgets, I saw it, a shadow that moved. Not the benign, predictable sway of inanimate objects, but a deliberate, creeping motion. It vanished before I could process its form, leaving behind a cold shiver down my spine. Whispers. My ears weren't deceiving me this time. They slithered through the air, words unintelligible but unmistakably human. The reality of my situation crashed down on me with suffocating clarity. In the vast, locked confines of a sleeping Walmart, someone, or something, was sharing this involuntary vigil. Fear urged me to hide, but the very fear that sought to cripple me also propelled me forward. I needed to see, to understand. Guided by a mix of dread and determination, I moved closer to where the whispers had birthed. The aisles seemed to stretch on forever, a never-ending labyrinth where every shadow harbored potential threats, and every whisper was a herald of unseen horrors lurking just beyond the reach of my trembling flashlight. But there was nothing. The whispers had ceased as abruptly as they had begun, leaving behind a thundering silence that pounded in my ears. My breathing was heavy, a stark and unnerving melody in the quiet of the night. With a sense of isolation enveloping me tighter than the darkness, I realized the game had changed. This was no longer a dare, it was survival. What started as a jest had spiraled into a genuine horror story, with me, Alex, unwittingly cast as the protagonist. The challenge was no longer about enduring a night of solitude within Walmart's walls, but unraveling the mystery of my unseen companion. Little did I know, the true terror had yet to unveil itself. Waiting in the shadows to transform my idle escapade into a desperate fight for sanity and survival in the after-hours nightmare, tension knotted in my stomach as I found myself drawn to the security office, a sliver of hope that surveillance would untangle this enigma. The door was ajar, which struck me as odd a silent invite or a careless oversight. The bank of monitors glowed, a surreal sight against the backdrop of darkness. Each screen flickered with different sections of the store, all empty, until one caught my eye. It was me. The camera was live, tracking my movements with uncanny precision. My heart thudded, a realization that this was no accident. I was being watched, hunted in a twisted game where I knew not the rules nor the player. As the truth settled in, a shadow darted across another screen, too quick to identify, but undeniably human. My observer, the source of those whispering taunts, was close, and the thought chilled me more than the night air. The monitors became a macabre show, revealing glimpses of my pursuer, yet never enough to confront or comprehend. I was caught in an unseen web, every move observed, every decision anticipated. Fleeing the security office, I realized stealth was my only advantage. The store transformed into an arena, its aisles a labyrinth. Using a mirror pilfered from home goods, I peeked around corners, evading the ever-present gaze that I felt, if not always saw. But evasion was a temporary tactic, a more permanent solution was needed. Invaded by a sense of vulnerability, I found temporary solace in the employee's break room. It was a makeshift shelter, surrounded by personal lockers and remnants of day-to-day -day mundanity, a stark contrast to my night of terror. I barricaded the door with a table, creating a fortress of solitude. But sanctuaries are illusions in nightmares. Night deepened, and with it the veil between sanity and madness thinned. He found me. The door shuddered under the weight of his presence, the silence broken by a low, menacing chuckle. Found you, he whispered, a voice laced with derangement. Charlie, an employee I'd seen before but never like this, his face distorted by shadows and sanity frayed at the edges, I escaped through a back door, heart pounding, the chase reignited. Across grocery, past clothing, under the dim surveillance of flickering lights. I ran, with Charlie's maddened laughter echoing behind me. The store, once a repository of consumer dreams, now felt like a desolate space station, isolated, cold, and filled with unseen dangers. Cornered in the home improvement section, I improvised a distraction, 
spilling paint cans to create slippery terrain and disorient my pursuer. It was a desperate ploy, relying on luck and the element of surprise. The cacophony of tumbling cans and Charlie's curses filled the air as I slipped away. A momentary reprieve gained in this high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Every shadow held menace, every sound a potential threat, as I navigated the once familiar terrain now transformed into a hostile environment. The realization that survival hinged not on confrontation but evasion settled heavily on me. The Walmart had become a theater of horror, with me unwittingly cast in a starring role I never auditioned for. The early morning hours had turned the store into a landscape bathed in the surreal light of pre-dawn. The chase intensified, with the culmination drawing near. My breaths were heavy, each step a testament to the primal urge to survive. The grocery aisles, with their towering shelves laden with products, became the final battleground. It was here, amidst the canned goods and packaged bread, that Charlie cornered me, his sanity lost to the depths of isolation and despair his eyes gleaming with a disturbing fervor. The confrontation was inevitable. Charlie lunged, brandishing the box cutter with an erratic frenzy. Adrenaline coursed through me, sharpening my senses, guiding my movements. The struggle was chaotic, a dance of desperation. In a moment of sheer instinct, I managed to disarm him, the metallic clatter of the box cutter hitting the floor echoing like a gunshot in the silence. But I couldn't bring myself to harm him further. Instead, I pushed past, using a surge of strength born from fear to thrust him into the cold storage room. Slamming the door shut, I barricaded it with a nearby cart, trapping my pursuer in a prison of his own making. The keys. They hung from his vest, a glint of hope in the dim light. With trembling hands, I seized them, my ticket to freedom, my escape from this nocturnal horror. The store, once a colossal trap, now offered a path to salvation. I made my way to the front, each step imbued with the weight of the night's terror. The automatic doors parted with a sigh, a whisper of release. The first light of dawn caressed my face, a soothing balm to the night's wounds. I stepped outside, the crisp morning air filling my lungs, the parking lot empty, save for the flashing lights of a police cruiser approaching. The officers listened in disbelief as I recounted the tale, a story that straddled the line between reality and the fevered pitch of nightmare. They found Charlie, still in the cold storage, a man broken by his demons, both real and imagined. I watched the sun rise, its warmth a stark contrast to the chill that had settled in my bones. The world was waking up, oblivious to the horrors that lurk in the shadows of the places we consider safe. As for me, I knew I'd never look at the mundane settings of daily life the same way again. Walmart would always be a reminder of the night when a harmless dare spiraled into a fight for survival, a night that revealed the darkness lurking beneath the fluorescent lights, a night that taught me the gravest dangers often wear familiar faces, and that horror can find you, even in the aisles of the most commonplace of places. Every time I close my eyes, I can still hear my son's laughter echoing from somewhere deep within the aisles of that cursed Walmart, a sound that has become my every waking nightmare. It started as an ordinary evening, a simple errand transformed into an ordeal that would haunt me for the rest of my life. I wish I could tell you that what happened to Alex, to all of us that night, was just a bad dream or a figment of my overworked imagination, but the truth is far more chilling ensnared within the mundane confines of a place as familiar as your local superstore. My name is David Miller, and until that night I was just a regular guy, an electrician by trade, a divorced dad trying his best. I stand over six feet tall, but that night I felt small, dwarfed by towering shelves and endless aisles that seemed to mock my desperation with their normalcy. My usually comfortable jeans and simple t-shirt felt like a thin shield against an ever-growing dread. It was Alex who wanted to go. His bright brown eyes, so much like his mother's, lit up at the thought of replacing his broken action figure with a new one. Just you and me, Dad, he had said, his grin infectious. How could I say no to that? I remember the buzz of the fluorescent lights overhead, casting stark shadows on the linoleum floors. Alex tugged on my hand, pulling me towards the toy aisle, his small frame bobbing through the crowd. I glanced down at my phone, a mere second, 
chiding myself for letting work interrupt our time together. When I looked up, Alex was gone. Panic clawed its way up my throat, my heart pounding against my ribs as I called out his name, pushing past indifferent shoppers who couldn't understand the sudden fear that consumed me. The indifference of the staff twisted my insides, their blank stares offering no comfort as they claimed they hadn't seen him. Desperation led me to the security office, my stomach in knots as the off-duty cop on duty fiddled with the controls of the surveillance system. The grainy footage showed Alex, animated and alive, darting towards the toy aisle, only to disappear off-screen, leaving no clue, no direction to follow. My mind raced with horrifying possibilities as the clock ticked on, each passing moment a stark reminder of my failure to protect him. As the last of the Walmart staff began to shuffle out, their shifts ending in the dead of night, I hid in the shadows, my heart heavy with a dread I couldn't shake. The plan was simple, stay behind, search every inch of the store until I found Alex. The police hadn't been helpful, their protocol requiring a waiting period I refused to accept. So there I was, alone, in a place that now seemed as foreign and menacing as a dark forest. That's when I met Henry. He emerged from the dimly lit corridors like a specter, his janitorial uniform hanging loosely on his frail frame. His eyes, deep set and weary, locked onto mine with an intensity that made me pause. You won't find him by searching the usual places, he said, his voice a low whisper that carried a weight of unspoken sorrow. I didn't understand at first. Henry described a side of Walmart I never knew existed, hidden corridors and forgotten storage areas that lay beneath the bustling store. He spoke of others who had vanished before Alex, whispers of lost souls that few dared to speak of. His tale seemed as unbelievable as it was terrifying, but desperation led me to lend credence to his words. Guided by Henry's instructions, I found an unmarked door tucked away behind stacks of unsold holiday decorations. The lock gave way under the pressure of my makeshift tools, revealing a stairwell that descended into darkness. The air was cooler here, laced with the scent of damp and decay. Every instinct screamed to turn back, to flee the growing unease that gnawed at my insides. But the thought of Alex, somewhere beyond the veil of shadows, pushed me forward. I descended into the belly of the Walmart, my flashlight cutting through the darkness, illuminating long-forgotten aisles filled with merchandise that never made it to the surface. Dust-covered toys long out of fashion watched from their perches as I passed, a silent audience to my torment. The deeper I went, the more the reality of the place twisted. Walls bore the marks of hasty construction, spaces that didn't align with the architectural logic of the world above. I stumbled upon a room, its door ajar, revealing a scene that sent shivers down my spine. Rows upon rows of children's clothing, some aged and moth-eaten, others as pristine as the day they were sewn, each piece tagged with names and dates stretching back decades. In the center of the room, a circle of salt encompassed an array of toys, their arrangement deliberate and unsettling. A chill ran through me as I realized I wasn't merely in a lost section of Walmart, but standing at the heart of a mystery that defied explanation, a curse that Henry had hinted at, but I had yet to fully understand. As I turned to leave, a faint sound caught my attention, the distant echo of laughter mingling with a cold draft that breathed through the cracks in the walls. It was a sound out of place, yet eerily familiar, a child's laughter, joyous and uninhibited, Alex's laughter. Driven by a newfound determination, I followed the sound, each step taking me further from the world I knew and deeper into a nightmare I was only beginning to comprehend. The laughter guided me, a beacon in the suffocating darkness, leading me through twisted corridors until I found myself in a cavernous space unlike any part of the Walmart I knew. The air here was thick, charged with a palpable energy that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. In the center of the room stood an altar of sorts an ancient, dust-covered register surrounded by items that seemed to pulsate with an ethereal glow. Henry's words echoed in my mind, the ritual he had described with a solemnity that now made my heart race. I had to break the curse, to free Alex and the spirits of the children bound to this place. The cost was steep, a piece of my soul, an offering of love and desperation. With trembling hands, I placed Alex's favorite toy, the action figure we had come to replace, atop the altar. The room hummed, 
a sound that vibrated through my bones as I began to recite the words Henry had imparted upon me. Time lost its meaning as I spoke, the darkness deepening, swallowing the light from my flashlight. Shadows danced at the edge of my vision, forms both curious and malevolent, gathering to witness the culmination of decades of sorrow and loss. As the final words left my lips, a piercing cry shattered the silence, a sound of anguish and release that brought me to my knees. When the world righted itself, I found Alex standing before me, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and wonder. Tears blurred my vision as I pulled him into my arms, his presence a balm to the aching hole his absence had carved in my heart. We have to leave now, I rasped, clutching his hand tightly as we made our way back through the labyrinthine belly of Walmart. The store seemed to protest our departure, the corridors twisting unnaturally, but the ritual had broken the curse's hold, granting us passage. As we emerged into the night, the Walmart loomed behind us, a silent sentinel masking the horrors it had harbored. Our escape was a rebirth, stepping out of the darkness and into a world that felt both familiar and irrevocably changed. In the days that followed, my story was met with skepticism and disbelief dismissed as the ravings of a man driven to the brink of madness by grief and guilt. But I know the truth of what happened within those walls, of the curse that had claimed so many innocent souls and the price I paid for our freedom. The laughter of children no longer comforts me. It's a reminder of the echoes I left behind in the hidden depths of Walmart, of a curse broken but forever etched in my soul. My bond with Alex, strengthened in the crucible of our ordeal, has become my anchor a constant in the aftermath of unexplainable horror. And so I share my tale, a cautionary story of an ordinary evening that descended into nightmare, of a father's love tested in the face of unimaginable darkness. Let it serve as a reminder that within the most familiar places lie secrets that should never be awakened, and that some doors, once opened, can never truly be closed. The dim glow of fluorescent lights overhead cast long shadows down the empty aisles of Walmart, transforming the familiar into the uncanny. It was here, among the silent shelves and deserted checkout lines, that I sought an adventure, a story that would break the monotony of routine. Little did I know, the corridors between household goods and discounted electronics would soon echo with the whispers of my deepest fears. I had always been the thrill seeker among my friends, the one who dared to push the boundaries just to feel something, anything, that broke the spell of everyday existence. That night, in a bid for a laugh and a tale worth telling, I decided to hide in Walmart after hours. The plan was simple. Stay hidden until the store closed, then roam the empty halls until morning. A harmless escapade, I thought, or so it seemed. Finding a hiding spot proved easier than I expected. The family restroom at the back of the store offered the perfect sanctuary with its spacious single stall and lockable door. As the minutes ticked by and the final announcements called for shoppers to make their last purchases, I settled in, my heart racing with a cocktail of excitement and anxiety. Once the lights flicked off and the tumult of shoppers faded into silence, I waited for the store to become my playground. It wasn't long before the thrill of the dare morphed into a simmering unease. The silence was oppressive, a stark contrast to the bustling activity that filled the daytime. I stepped out of my hiding place, the soft squeak of my sneakers on the polished floor sounding like gunshots in the pervasive quiet. The store, a place I had visited countless times in daylight, felt alien under the glow of emergency exit signs. Compelled by a mix of curiosity and an eagerness to dispel the growing trepidation, I began to explore. The initial amusement at having the store to myself quickly waned as small, inexplicable occurrences started to prickle at my nerves. A can rolled off a shelf in the distance, the soft clatter echoing through the aisles. Rationalizing it as a result of my movements vibrating the floor, I pressed on, yet the seed of fear had been planted. As I rounded a corner into the next aisle, the sound of something heavy dropping in a far-off section made me freeze mid-step. My heart, thrashing wildly against my ribs, seemed to be the only sound beside the distant thump. It was then, in the oppressive silence that followed, that I felt it, the undeniable sensation of not being alone. My adventurous spirit, now curdled into a knot of dread, 
urged me to uncover the source of the noise, to prove to myself that I was indeed the sole human presence in the vast, shadowed expanse of Walmart after hours. The supermarket section, with its aisles shrouded in darkness, loomed ahead. Each step felt heavier as I approached, the invisible eyes of unseen watchers prickling the back of my neck. My journey for thrill had led me here, to the edge of an abyss I had not anticipated, staring into the depths of a night that promised to reveal horrors hidden beneath the mundane surface of a Walmart after hours. As I ventured deeper into the heart of the store, the uncanny feeling of being watched grew stronger. My footsteps, cautious and measured, were the only sound in the cavernous space, until a sudden motion caught my eye. There, at the end of an aisle lined with seasonal decorations, a figure moved, a brief glimpse of a person. My breath hitched in my throat, the thrill of adventure was long gone, replaced by a visceral fear of the unknown. This was no friend playing a prank or a late worker unaware of my presence. This stranger, with their unpredictable movements and shadowy form, exuded an aura of danger. I quickly ducked behind a nearby clothing rack, my heart pounding in my chest. Peering through the gaps in the hanging clothes, I tried to catch another glimpse of the figure, to discern any intentions from their movements. Yet the figure had vanished as silently as they had appeared, leaving me to question whether my mind was playing tricks on me in the eerie half-light of the store. The stillness that followed was unbearable. Every creak and whisper of air seemed to announce the approach of the stranger, driving my imagination into overdrive. I decided I could not stay hidden and vulnerable. I had to move to find a better hiding spot where I could observe without being seen. Creeping through the aisles, I made my way toward the grocery section, reasoning it would offer more cover among the racks and shelves. The pervasive silence was shattered when a display of cereal boxes suddenly toppled over behind me, sending a cascade of colorful cardboard onto the linoleum floor. The sound seemed to fill the entire store, and I broke into a run, desperate to distance myself from the source of the noise, and more importantly, from whoever, or whatever, had caused it. My flight took me through the dimly lit grocery aisles, where I frantically searched for a place to hide. The coolers emitted a low hum, the only sign of life in this deserted place. I finally spotted an open door leading to a storage area behind the bakery section. Darting inside, I hid behind crates of unstocked goods, my breath shallow and rapid. From my vantage point, I could hear the faint echo of footsteps growing closer, then receding, as if the stranger was searching, hunting. With each passing moment, the line between hunter and hunted blurred. My initial excitement had spiraled into a waking nightmare, where shadows took sinister shapes and silence was a herald of fear. The game of cat and mouse through the darkened store had turned into a struggle for survival, pushing me to the edge of panic with the realization that the thrill I had sought was nothing more than a door open to terror. Gathering every ounce of courage left in me, I waited for the silence to return, a signal that the stranger was moving away from my temporary refuge. My mind raced for a plan, a way to turn the tables in this high-stakes game of hide-and-seek. The electronics section, with its array of gadgets and gizmos, offered a potential solution. If I could reach it, I might find something to use in my defense or, at the very least, create a distraction. With a deep breath to steady my nerves, I moved from my hiding place, sticking to the shadows. The store, a labyrinth in the dark, seemed to twist and turn against me as I made my way to the electronics section. Each step was a calculated risk, but desperation lent me speed and silence. Upon reaching my destination, I scanned the area for anything that might help. My eyes settled on a display of portable speakers, a perfect tool to create a diversion. With trembling hands, I connected a speaker to my phone and selected the loudest, most jarring sound I could find. I set the volume to its maximum before hurling the speaker down an adjacent aisle the sudden, ear-splitting noise shattering the silence like a gunshot. The diversion worked. As the sound echoed through the store, I caught a glimpse of the stranger turning towards the noise, giving me the chance I needed. Seizing the moment, I darted around the aisles, my only focus the storage room where I had seen cleaning supplies, and crucially, a phone charger earlier in my exploration. 
Once inside, I barricaded the door with a heavy shelving unit and fell back against it, panting, my heart feeling like it would burst from my chest. In the relative safety of my makeshift fortress, I allowed myself a moment to think. My phone, previously dead, now slowly came back to life as it charged, offering a glimmer of hope. I realized with dawning horror that the store's silence had returned, more oppressive than ever, as if the building itself was holding its breath. Yet there was no sign of pursuit, no sound of the stranger trying to break through my barricade. It was unnervingly quiet. As the first light of dawn began to filter through the grimy windows, I knew it was time to try and make my escape. I removed the shelving slowly, muscles tensed for a confrontation that never came. The store, bathed in the soft light of morning, was peaceful, as if the night's terrors had been nothing more than shadows cast by my imagination. I stepped out of the store into the cool morning air, the mundane sounds of the waking city washing over me. Looking back at the Walmart, with its lights now steadily brightening, I felt a shiver run down my spine. Had it all been real? The danger? The stranger? The chase? The aftermath was eerily anticlimactic. No police swarmed the store. No news reports of a dangerous fugitive hiding in a local Walmart. The security footage, reviewed out of a mix of curiosity and an unshakable need for validation, showed only me, running, hiding, and throwing speakers for reasons that were absent from the grainy nighttime videos. As I walked away, the early morning sun warming my chilled skin, I couldn't shake the feeling that something fundamental had shifted inside me. The thrill-seeker who had entered the store looking for adventure was gone, replaced by someone older, wiser, and infinitely more cautious. The true horror of that night wasn't the possibility of physical danger, it was the realization that the scariest monsters are the ones we might bring with us, hidden deep within our minds, waiting for the perfect moment to emerge. The fluorescent lights hummed above me like a nest of discontent hornets as I patrolled the quiet aisles of Walmart, the weight of the night shift resting heavily on my shoulders. My name is Ava, and for the past two years, I've made sure that the only thing leaving this store without a receipt is the occasional fruit fly. That night, however, was different. It was the night the shadows in aisle seven decided they had stories to tell. I stumbled upon the anomaly by pure chance, or perhaps by fate's twisted design, a small, unassuming black dot nestled behind a stack of discounted yarn, a hidden camera. My initial thought was misplaced inventory tech, but the cold prickling sensation down my spine whispered otherwise. It was methodically placed with a clear view of the aisle, a silent watcher in the shadows. My heart raced, a silent alarm echoing the dread pooling in my gut. Who would plant a camera here and why? The questions battered my resolve. With the camera surreptitiously pocketed, I made my way to the fortress of screens and buttons that was the security room, the sanctum of surveillance. It was there, amidst the blinking lights and scrolling feeds, that I took my first real step into the abyss. I plugged the camera into our system, the digital realm flickering to life before my eyes. The footage began as a tedious lullaby of empty aisles and occasional shoppers, but as the timeline skipped forward, my skepticism turned into a suffocating anxiety. It was the precision that unnerved me, the way the camera's angle perfectly framed each unsuspecting customer, lingering just a second too long as if memorizing their faces, their habits. But it wasn't until I saw her, a regular Mrs. Thompson, that the horror truly took hold. The footage didn't just watch, it studied her, tracked her movements through the store with an intimate focus. And then, as if aware of my prying eyes, the footage cut to black, replaced with a chilling message etched in white against the darkness. We see you too, Ava. The silence of the security room became a deafening scream. My mind raced, terror and adrenaline pumping through my veins. I grabbed my walkie, ready to call it in, but paused. This was personal, a direct threat. A part of me, the part honed by military grit and a stubborn streak a mile wide, rose to the challenge. Whoever was behind this wasn't dealing with a frightened store clerk. They were dealing with a soldier. And I was about to launch my counterattack. The world of security cameras and suspicious shadows was familiar territory, but being a target in someone else's game was unnerving ground. 
Alone at my desk, with the eerie afterglow of the monitor as my only company, I pondered my next move. The threat was clear, deliberate. It was a signature, a declaration that I was now part of this sinister narrative. Yet fear, although a constant whisper, did not dictate my actions. It fueled them. My decision to take matters into my own hands didn't come lightly. I knew the risks, understood the potential darkness I was inviting into my orbit. But I also knew I couldn't, wouldn't live my life looking over my shoulder. With a newfound resolve, I reached out to the only two people in this colossal consumer fortress I trusted, Mark and Lana. Mark, with his ever-present glasses perched on the bridge of his nose, was a repository of technological know-how masked under a veil of shyness. Lana, vibrant and fearless, possessed an innate ability to read people like the latest fashion magazine. When I laid out the situation, the gravity of our circumstance drew us together, sealing our alliance. Mark dissected the camera's metadata with forensic precision, while Lana pieced together a timeline of suspicious activities correlating with the camera's footage dates. Armed with this new intelligence, a plan began to form. We knew confrontation was inevitable, yet direct confrontation was not an option, not yet. We needed the element of surprise, an advantage against an adversary cloaked in anonymity. The plan was risky, a gambit that placed myself as bait in the very aisles I once surveyed with detached vigilance. The trap was simple, yet intricate, utilizing our knowledge of the store's labyrinthine layout and the blind spots in our official surveillance system, areas I knew the stalker exploited. We set up decoy operations, false trails leading to meticulously staged traps designed to flush the stalker into the open. Lana's role was to be the eyes on the ground, blending in with the late night shoppers while keeping a discreet watch. Mark, from his sanctuary amid cables and monitors, would orchestrate the technological ballet, ensuring all communication channels remained encrypted, invisible to prying eyes. As I stepped into the dimly lit aisles, acting the part of the unsuspecting victim, my every move was calculated, a choreographed dance with danger. Each shadow, each flicker of movement in my peripheral vision could be the moment of discovery. My heart raced not with fear, but anticipation. This was it, the culmination of our efforts, a showdown that had begun with a single hidden camera and evolved into a battle of wits and wills. The store, in its nocturnal solemnity, became the arena. I moved through it with practiced ease, all the while feeling the weight of unseen eyes. The trap was set. The stage was ready and all players were in motion. Now, it was a waiting game, a game I intended to win. The trap, a meticulously laid web of surveillance and decoys, was set. The store's eerie silence wrapped around me, a stark contrast to the storm of activity hidden beneath the surface. Each step I took was heavy with purpose, knowing that with every passing moment, we drew closer to the confrontation. Mark's voice, a constant presence in my earpiece, guided me, while Lana's subtle signals kept me aware of the larger picture unfolding around us. Then it happened. A flicker of shadow, out of place among the static shelves, caught my attention. My pulse spiked, not with fear, but with the thrill of the hunt turning in our favor. I moved towards the anomaly, each step deliberate, as Mark and Lana executed the next phase of our plan with precision. The shadow materialized into a figure, a man cloaked in the anonymity of dim lighting and nondescript clothing, his attention fixed on me. It was a face I had seen but never noticed, a fellow employee whose presence had always been peripheral. Our eyes locked, and in that moment, devoid of any pretense, I saw the depth of his obsession, the chaos masked by a facade of normalcy. The final confrontation was not a cacophony of violence, but a battle of strategy. As he advanced, so did I, leading him deeper into our trap, towards the storeroom where the culmination of our efforts awaited. Lana emerged from the shadows, her role shifting from observer to active participant, her vibrant energy now a beacon of strength. Together we cornered him, our collective resolve serving as the final nail in his coffin of surveillance and stalking. The storeroom, once a place of mundane inventory, became the arena of his downfall. Surrounded by the evidence of his obsession, the man's facade crumbled, revealing the depth of his delusion. Our trap, reliant not on physical force but on the psychological pressure of being outmaneuvered and exposed, drew a confession from his lips, a tale of voyeurism and twisted justification. In the aftermath, 
As law enforcement took the stalker away, the store returned to its nocturnal silence, a deceptive peace settling over the aisles. We had won, but the victory was not without its scars. The revelation of the stalker's identity and the extent of his surveillance network within our community forced us all to confront the fragile veil of privacy and safety we take for granted. In the days that followed, alongside Mark and Lana, I led the charge in unraveling the broader network the stalker had been part of. Our efforts laid bare a sinister underbelly of voyeurism and extortion that had thrived in the shadows of everyday life. Our story, a testament to resilience and unity in the face of unseen threats, served as a catalyst for change, sparking conversations on privacy, security, and the dark allure of voyeurism. As the lights dimmed on another day, I stood in the quiet solitude of the store, reflecting on our journey from ordinary employees to defenders of privacy and safety. The hidden camera that had started it all was now a relic of our ordeal, a reminder of the darkness we had faced and overcome. The store, once a simple place of employment, had transformed into a battleground where we reclaimed our security, our privacy, and ultimately, our peace. Alone in the dead of night, a Walmart night shift turns from routine to an entangling web of shadows, whispering secrets of those hidden within its walls. What started as another shift, blending into the countless ones before, quickly descended into a night I'd never forget. The night, the silence, spoke back. It was just past 2 a.m. when the eeriness of the sprawling store began to seep beneath my skin. With only the hum of the fluorescent lights for company, I found myself longing for the mundane complaints of customers or the incessant beeping of the checkout scanners, anything to drown out the oppressive silence. Roger, my only coworker, had wandered off to restock the electronics section, leaving me to contend with aisle seven's toiletries alone. Every footstep echoed off the linoleum, a stark reminder of the cavernous emptiness surrounding me. I remember sighing, the breath fogging in the cool air, thinking how the graveyard shift at Walmart could make one drearily philosophical. That's when I first heard it, a whisper, so soft it might have been carried by the wind had there been any, but there wasn't. The air was still and the whisper carried my name, Anna, on a breath that sent shivers cascading down my spine. I spun around, my heart hammering against my ribcage, expecting to confront a prankster hiding among the aisles but there was only the long stretch of empty shelves bathed in the sterile glow of fluorescent light. I convinced myself it was my imagination, a trick of the mind conjured by fatigue. But as I continued my tasks, the feeling of being watched encroached upon every moment. Shadows seemed to flicker at the edge of my vision and the back of my neck prickled with unease. Determined to shake off the growing dread, I ventured toward the warehouse section to retrieve a box of surplus stock. The vast, shadowed space behind the store was even less welcoming in the dark hours of the night. It was there, amidst the towering racks of unsorted merchandise, that I felt the unmistakable sensation of not being alone. A sound, distinct from the general ambient noise, had me freeze mid-step, a scraping like the shuffling of feet. My heart raced and my breath hitched as I dared not even blink. Tilting my head slightly, I strained my eyes in the dimness, and then, for a fleeting moment, I caught it. A movement in the corner of my eye, a shadow that seemed to slink away into the depths of the warehouse. Panic twisted in my gut, yet a part of me rebelled against the fear, rationalizing it as sheer tiredness. I forced myself to move, grabbing the stock with trembling hands and retreating quickly back to the well-lit safety of the store. But as I emerged from the warehouse, Roger's words from an earlier conversation echoed ominously in my mind. You know, they say Walmarts have more than just lost souls wandering their aisles at night. I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever lurked in the shadows was not just a figment of my exhausted imagination, but something or someone sinister, watching, waiting. I tried to dismiss the feeling of unease as I continued my night's work, convincing myself that the shadows hiding in the periphery of my vision were just that, shadows, nothing more. Yet curiosity and a growing sense of dread propelled me to investigate further. My discovery behind the gardening section was not something I could have prepared for. Hidden away, beyond pallets of unsold plants and garden ornaments, 
was a door I had never noticed before. It was small, almost too easy to miss unless you were looking for it, tucked away behind a rack of fertilizers. The lock looked recently tampered with, a detail that chilled me to the bone. As I pushed the door open, the hinge let out a soft groan, revealing a cramped space filled with personal belongings, a stained mattress, a heap of old clothes, and cans of food scattered around. It was clear someone had been living here, within the walls of Walmart, unseen by the hundreds of shoppers and employees who passed by daily. My heart pounded in my chest as I processed the implications. Someone was here, sharing the store with us in secret. A squatter, perhaps, or something far more unsettling, a stalker calling this hidden nook their home. Panic knotted in my stomach when I thought of the whispered name and the fleeting shadows. Were they all connected to this hidden resident? I intended to leave, to report my findings to Roger, or even the manager, when the lights throughout the store suddenly flicked off. Total darkness enveloped me, the sudden blackout snatching away my sight. My phone's flashlight became my only source of illumination, casting long, ominous shadows across the endless aisles. I was trapped, with the knowledge of not being alone gnawing at the edges of my mind. Footsteps, deliberate and slow, echoed through the darkened store. They were too close, coming from the end of the aisle I was in. Panic gripped me, urging my legs to move, to run from the looming threat that stalked the blackened corridors of the store. I navigated through the aisles, desperately trying to put distance between myself and whoever, or whatever, was sharing the darkness with me. It was in the security office, the door fortuitously unlocked, where I sought refuge. The monitors glowed in the dim room, the CCTV feed a mosaic of empty, darkened aisles. With trembling fingers, I switched the feeds, searching for any sign of movement, for evidence to confirm I wasn't losing my mind. What I found was far more horrifying, a figure, caught on camera, darting between the aisles. But it was the final frame, frozen on the screen, that turned my blood cold. There, in grainy black and white, was the stark image of the tormentor, pausing as if looking directly at the camera, at me, the worn remnant of a Walmart uniform hung from his gaunt frame, his face obscured in shadow. The tormentor was real, a former employee turned sinister stalker, living within the store's hidden recesses. The realization hit me with the force of a physical blow. Every misplaced item, the whispered name, and the fleeing shadows were his doing, all pieces of a terrifying puzzle that I was now a part of. My mind raced for a solution, for any way to outsmart and escape the captor who knew this store and its secrets better than I ever could. My breaths, ragged and fear sharpened, filled the small security office as I weighed my options. Dawn was still hours away and with the store's power out, my options were severely limited. Yet, as terror threatened to overwhelm me, a flicker of resolve steadied my trembling hands. I wasn't going down without a fight. Using my knowledge of the store layout, I crafted a plan to escape. I knew the tormentor, lurking in the shadows, was familiar with the store's aisles and hidden spaces, but I hoped the element of unpredictability would be on my side. Edging out of the security office, my phone's flashlight cutting a swath through the darkness, I moved with as much silence as a deer skirting a predator's territory. The store had transformed into a labyrinthine trap, Aisles I had walked hundreds of times now twisted into unfamiliar territory by the cloak of darkness. Yet, as I neared the main entrance, a glimmer of hope began to grow in my chest, a hope that was almost snuffed out when I saw him. The tormentor stood between me and my freedom, his silhouette a dark blot against the faint pre-dawn gray seeping through the entrance's glass doors. His movements were deliberate, a hunter's dance. Panic urged me to flee, but determination rooted me to the spot. This was the culmination of the night's terror, a showdown I hadn't asked for but was forced to confront. Then, an idea sparked within me, as desperate as it was dangerous. I hurled my phone to the side, the flashlight's beam casting errant shadows as it clattered across the floor. As the tormentor turned towards the sound, I bolted. My legs, fueled by adrenaline, carried me past him. My focus singular, reached the doors, break through to the outside. The air of freedom that greeted me was the sweetest I'd ever tasted. Dawn broke, a sliver of light banishing the hot night's horrors as I stumbled into the parking lot, the store's glass doors a barrier between me and the nightmare I'd escaped. 
Sirens in the distance heralded the arrival of the police, a sound that had never been more welcome. As I recounted my ordeal, with Roger by my side lending his support, the police took notes, their expressions a mix of disbelief and grave concern. The day bled into morning, the rising sun casting long shadows that seemed far less menacing in the light of day. The store would reopen, its doors welcoming customers unaware of the night's terrors. But for me, Walmart would forever hold a different meaning, a place where shadows lived and where fear had a face. As I walked away, the weight of my experiences hung heavy on my shoulders, a reminder of the night I faced my deepest fears. And though the tormentor was caught, his motives laid bare in the stark light of interrogation, the scars he left behind were not so easily explained away. They whispered of the darkness that lurks in familiar places, of the unseen dangers hidden in plain sight. I was changed, marked by the ordeal, but I emerged resilient a survivor of a night when Walmart's shadows reached out to claim me as their own.